way. Uh, it wasn't Jack Hiles that originally took a stand for the King James Bible. Uh, back in the 60s and the 70s, those of us who believed the King James Bible was inspired, perfect, preserved word of God in English, were being called Ruffinites, and we were being told we were stupid and the most ignorant doctrine they'd ever heard. It was fanaticism, it was extremism, it was bibliolatry. And um, there was one school in America where you could go and not have the Bible corrected. Right. And that was the best school Bible Institute, and that's why I went there in 1978. No court. High tech. <laughs> oh, I'm not uh, running along with the pastor and letting all these black fingers. <laughs> and uh, I'm not worried about trying to write on myself a little junkyard dog. That's what I'm going to say. Lord put me in a junkyard and the old Bible there, people were messing with it. And the Lord said, I want you to drive this book. And if somebody comes over the fence, bite the bridges out. That's what I've been doing for about 54 years, biting the bridges out. You'll see junkyard dogs. They're not usually not thoroughbreds, not, not thoroughbreds or German shepherd usually. They're kind of mongrels, just medium size or small. But now when they come up, they don't wag the tail at you. <laughs> and the first thing you know, they go, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and uh, I do it. All right, now let's get up to date here and see where we're at. And I don't want to have any misunderstanding this morning. My people are military people, grandfather, general, Philippines of direction, uh, fathers of colonel, World War II, Captain World War I, brothers of sergeant, World War II, I'm a shade player, World War II. I'm red, white, and blue, but I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, I've got a book, and this book was given to me in 1949. Never saw one of them until I was 27 years old with college education. Until I read the Koran through and studied the Shastas and the Giranas and the Dhabhagi and the Kama Sutra. Now the whole stinking mess overseas, including Buddhism and Buddhism and Krakena and Sith and Nirvana and like all that junk. And March of 1949, I got all the Bible and got saved. I got to read the Bible and I'm going to learn something pretty quick. And uh, I still know it to be true. And it's, we'll start here this morning. Real negative. Matter of fact, you're going to hear more negative stuff in the next 30 minutes than you've heard in the last six years. Uh, because uh, the Bible is always right and man is always wrong. Now, see this little thing right here? That don't look like much better. That's the Middle East, that's Palestine, that's Jerusalem. All history begins and ends there. It's all about American history, it doesn't exist. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40. What about European history? No such thing. Well, Asiatic history doesn't count. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, and come down there, uh, no one verses Mark, but I want to verse down there that says, The nations are less than a drop in a bucket. What verse is that? 17. What is it? 17. 17. Now, they're even less than that. The nations, the United Nations, keep on reading, are less than nothing. What is that? 17. What is it? 17. Less than nothing. You know what that is? You just pull out a cipher with a rim knocked off. That's a zero. In mathematics, you know what you study? You study minus one, minus two, minus three. You know what America is in God's sight? An absolute blank. Amen. You know what God's sight is as far as Germany is concerned? Italy and Spain and France and Russia and China? There's nothing there. They're just a pile of heathen. First Corinthians says the three kinds of people, the Jews, the Gentiles, and there's the church. The body of Christ is either Jew or Gentile. Outside the body of Christ, there's Jew and Gentile. What about the Gentiles? They're heathen in the Bible. Numbers chapter 23 says Israel will not be numbered among the nations. And today Israel is in the UN, so you're going to have to take it out. If not to be numbered among the nations. You say, why? Well, because the, the nation are less than nothing. You see, the American, you're aware of the fact that you got blessed in this country. God knows you do. My, my parish runs from Bombay and Hyderabad and CO of, of Manila up to Fort Worth and Dallas and New York and Canada and Mexico and God knows where. My, my plane mining is 40000 a year. I've been up in the air alone with a seagull with sore feet. <laughs> and it runs 40000 a year for 50 years. And I know the condition of the country is really. And I know God blessed this country. But he's through blessing. You 
between God bless America, you red, blue, and white, and blue, and the face. But God in that book doesn't bless the nation to live like we're living. How much you want to bet? I'll give you 500 bucks to buy that. You know what God did his own chosen people, the Jews? He drove them out in front of the city and did away with them for something like 1,900 years. And you think America has a privilege that you doesn't have? That's where you come into it, see. When I see this thing here, the last thing that happened before eternity begins is the white throne judgment from the Revelation 20. Do you know what happens right before Revelation 20? Why don't you? And that's Chris, that's where time ends. It ends with the end of the morning, the white throne judgment. You know where it ends? It ends right there. Satan went out and gathered the nations together, nations, like God and they gone from the sand of the sea, and they encompassed the beloved city round about, and fire came down to heaven and destroyed them all. And I saw a great white throne, him that sat upon it, from all the space to heaven and fell away, no place found with them, and I saw the dead small and great stand for God throughout history. History ends right there. See? Now this time I'm not talking about prehistory, prehistory doesn't exist. Prehistory is Disney World. <laughs> About history. By the cyclopedia will have written history beginning in 4000 BC. Some will make it 5000 BC. The cyclopedia knows when the writing starts. You can start with Archbishop Usher's date in Genesis, about 4000 BC. Your history begins right there. Who is it? Both of Why don't you know that? You open your Bible, your Bible tells in Genesis that God put Adam in the garden eastward in Eden. Where is Eden? Well, in Genesis chapter 2, it says one of the rivers of the Euphrates. In Genesis 2. It's your hill and Hittigel. You turn to Ezekiel, you'll find Ezekiel by Hittigel. Hittigel, he's over in here. Hittigel, the Tigris river. The garden like this. Eden like that. And the garden is planted eastward. Thy arm went down here to uh, uh, Ethiopia. Tyson went off into Arabia. There were two more of there. And we went there and fought the Kuwait there, there, the photographers in the air, over there and photographed the place and found two dry riverbeds that had been there for centuries. Flood almost obliterated right through there. You know, you began your life pretty ago. You know where you are in history right now? You're in Genesis 2. That's where you are. He made man out of the dust of the ground. Where is it? It's east what it eaten. How do you know that's eaten? You don't think it's eaten because when God called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans, it's right there. Ur of the Chaldeans, it's right there. He had him go up to Euphrates and his daddy Haran died up here and he came down here. When he got down here, this place here, the Lord said, uh, I'm going to give him this place, the whole place. I'm going to give this whole place from the river of Egypt, Genesis 15. The river of Egypt, that's the Nile, to the great river of Egypt. That's Israel. That ain't the West Bank, the East Bank. That's Israel right there. That's what God promised Abraham. You know God's calling in Psalm 105? In Psalm 105, that's called an everlasting covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob's sons. A past defeat says the millennium when Christ comes back, these twelve tribes will have a place for the desert, blossom like a rose. And that's not up around where the artificial irrigation is around Galilee with uh, uh, the, your sponsors, Lindsay, the Texas Mars, the rest of them try to kid you on. That doesn't blossom like a rose, the wicked does. It's right there. And they Christ come back. That's the piece of ground. Now, something right there. If you left up where no doubt they are, you got up here in Ararat and ran that thing down. Like this somewhere. Shea would get that side and Ham would get another thing there. And Jake would get over there. The Europeans over here. Orientals over here. After we found here. Like that. Now, the Christian is, uh, most Christian in America is, what we call 
biblical literates, and it comes from the most bad teaching in the schools. For example, what is the main theme of the Bible? Say it's Christ. What is the main person of the Bible? What's the main theme? Folks say salvation. That ain't even the fifth book. You'll stop thinking about this and pick up the Bible. Uh, you're reading the New Testament, reading the New Testament. Uh, we'll book of uh, Revelation, some of those epistles there kind of in the tribulation people, but we'll take the whole Old Testament for a Christian. And there's what you've got for the Bible. There's the Bible. Right there. You've got less than one quarter. Folks of God's all through it. No, he ain't through it. And the Romans chapter 11. He's starting. He's starting. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And look there at verse 26. That's a warning by Paul to the Gentiles. And the whole chapter is to the Gentiles. Yet not to an individual Christian. That's part of the olive tree and the wild olive tree and the good olive tree has nothing to do with an individual losing their salvation. It's talking about Gentiles and Israel. All right, Romans chapter 11, verse 26. And all that will be saved. When? When Jesus Christ comes back, verse 26. And turns ungodliness away from who? For who, folks? Jacob. That's not the spirit of salvation. They got nothing to do with Israel of God. Jacob. That's the father of the 12 tribes. His name is Israel. All right, now where are you? Look at verse 25. I would not, brethren, you should aim to this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until of course the Gentiles may come in and saw Israel, not I weep, not I weep, spiritual seed, but no, no, a nation, Israel, to be saved. Now, if you're not careful in, uh, for that thing, what will happen? Verse 18. Boast not against the branches, for if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. And I will say they were broken off, that I might be grafted in well, because of unbelief they were broken off. Verse 21, If God spared not the natural branch of Israel, take ye, thus he spare not thee. The Gentiles, therefore behold the goodness and severity of God. And what God's going to do? I know he's going to do. I know exactly what going to do. Say, well, what do you think you're right and everybody else is wrong? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if I've got it in print and the Lord said it, I can be absolutely certain of it. I'll read your future here this morning. I pray for the Lord to come back every day. Every day I get up, I say, I hope it's today. Well, I say, you just want the Lord to come rock me because you're not because you love him, but because you're scared. And I say, you got my number. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's coming. All around Chicago, we drive down these highways back and forth, we worry about the taxes, we worry about the building program, we worry about the gasoline, we worry about the income, we worry about Iraq and Iran, all this junk. And they don't know, and of course I'm here with you. When the axe fall, it's going to hit me just one of you. But the axe won't fall if the Lord's average. Turn to Zephaniah chapter 3, and when you find it, raise your hand. Zephaniah 3. I want to see what you can read. Zephaniah 3, you got hand down here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, that's pretty good. Some of you might get an index. <laughs> you, ever, you ever try to memorize the books in the Bible when you went back there to Sunday school? Some of you adults now haven't, you haven't memorized them for a long time, have you? It's in the Old Testament. You're looking for it. <laughs> Zephaniah chapter 3. Brother Huff, would you read us the verse? Read us verse 8 real loud and clear. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nation. What? What? The determination is the what? Gather the nation. Hold on, God. You're not the nation. That's God's determination. Go ahead. That I may assemble the kingdom. Whoa. In my nation of Sabbath. Clear upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. He went and got them to kill them, that's why God got them. <laughs> <laughs> no little twin tower stuff, that's good stuff. He would get the whole crew. 
Find the tares and bundles to burn. Not very deep. He's what about the United States? He's from there, turn to Jeremiah chapter 30. He's one up for the rest of it. Jeremiah chapter 30. Talks about the sheep and goat nations. I know sheep and goat nations. Their nation gathered together and he takes sheep and goats out of those nations and sets them on the right hand left. They're not such a, such a nation there. Every nation there is anti Semitic in the tribulation. He took out those individuals who created the Jew rights. But the nations, they go down the drain. Brother Hunter, if you allow the Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. I'll tell you what, Israel. Though I make the full end of all nations. What? Full end of all nations. Of uh, how many nations? All. Well, go ahead. Whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. You understand, you understand what you read? He said, Every nation will do to scatter dispersion on the white mouth. Are there any Jews in Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> any Jews in New York? Any nation that is scattered, I'm going to clear, clear them off the map. I don't look and flick at me. I, mean, I can't help you that spend watching the food tube and the glass toilet. <laughs> instead, of, instead of reading your book, read your book. You folks are saved, but say people in America today, they quit reading the Old Testament. You're acting like it's over. It started. Starting, but I'll get back here. History ends there. No history begins, begins there. So, all history is encompassed in the Middle East, and that's what we're in the media now in the Middle East. But that shows you, that shows you when it's talking about the imminence of the Lord coming, now it's going to be breathing down your neck because you can't go any further backwards. History began right there. And end right there. So history is, is Old Testament, New Testament, the spread of the gospel, Protestant Reformation, Old United States, missionary stuff here, missionary revival in California, Billy Graham, revival in Korea, Korean War, revival in India going on right now, coming this way, now you come here, now you come here, now you sit here, ain't no place to go. Genesis 22, 
and has nothing to do with a man loving a woman or a woman loving a man. The whole thing is off. The first time love occurs in your Bible has nothing to do with a woman loving a child. The first crack in that book where God says, Love says, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and offer him for a burnt offering upon the mountain which I will tell thee of. It's a picture of a man's love for his son. You say, why? Because here he loved, not that we love God, but he loved us and gave his son. You see? I could pick up my Bible one day and I thought to myself, I wonder what the word holy first verse I heard. And I read through Genesis and over a hundred times, 130, 40, 50, I have a good wish. And coming through there, I looked at this word holy and it didn't occur anywhere in Genesis. Nothing holy in Genesis. God there is going to say he's holy. Holy Spirit there, but I'm going to say holy. This is spirit. I couldn't find any holy in Genesis. Not even the prophecies on Christ. I got the Exodus chapter 3, you know what he said? He said to Moses, he said, take off your shoes off your feet. Because the left ground you stand on is holy. And Moses is right there. My son. The first thing God ever said, holy to this earth, was not holy Mary, or holy mother of God, or the holy church, or holy Lamb of Man, or holy Easter morning, or holy Christmas. <laughs> the first thing God said was holy was a piece of dirt. Right there. Now, you know how strange that is? When God go back and leave out that garden, he said, curses of the ground. For I said. And the first thing he called holy was Sunday curse. Just like that. The ground, you stand on the whole face, you walk with you. Then he makes an ark down there, the ark the cover is made down there, and he comes down off the mountain and boy, they got that golden camp and 3,000 people died there. Killed. Holy ground. It's bloodstream, you got 3,000 people killed. And they take that ark, and that Jew wanders that wilderness for 40 years. And he carries that ark and he over here, and he carries it off over here. 22,000 out here, 25,000 there, and they from the fire and go down to the pit alive, and the fire comes out and the ship is fighting for the ark. The ark goes right up to here, the King's Highway, comes across here to Gilgal or Joshua, and the Lord says to Joshua and Gilgal, take your shoes off your feet, because the ground you stand on is holy. When you say something holy, that doesn't mean anything. What's this bunch of junk? The holy Koran, for the garbage. <laughs> because you say it's holy, that means holy. If I said the scriptures were holy, that would mean anything. Except the scriptures said that. Romans 1 2, the holy scriptures. Daniel 10, the scripture of truth. Just what the Father says, oh, well, I mean. Now, where that ark goes, is bloodshed, and the ark settles right in Jerusalem. And Old Solomon says, all the places to look the ark is traveled, it went to Joshua. And when Joshua came in, that ark went all over there like that. And about uh, two million Canaanites, Gibbonites, Sidonites, Amorites, Hivites got killed. That's holy. But the Lord said that land is the holy land. He said it, not the Pope. The Lord said it. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm chapter 2. We're just getting the background. This is the introduction we have the message yet. Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. Now look it up. Nothing like a Bible clear for college education. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. I don't have much education. I got I got much education. I ain't never certain you got in the state of Illinois. And I can find the faculty of Tubingen right here, and the faculty of Edinburgh sitting right here, and the faculty of Berkeley and uh, Chicago, and the seminary of Louisville and Denver and that bunch, and, and Fort Worth and that bunch, and that and Pillsbury and and Bob Jones and Tennessee Temple and Liberty Baptist College and Crown College sitting right here, I'd spit them on the back of a bunch and drop them one, one spit and drown them. And if you say, well, you must, must have much education. I had plenty of education. It just didn't take. <laughs> my fellow had, my fellow made said to me one time, he said, Lord me, Dr. Love me, he didn't tell you me, you got a PhD. I said, that's right. She said, Lord me, if you preach one wouldn't think you had no education at all. <laughs> I can say that a compliment. <laughs> I really do. Well, I see this thing here. He said, Song do, you got Song do. I want my first four or five. Uh, yeah, 
I'll set my king upon my holy hill. What verse is that? Six. Six. See it? Who's his king? Look at the next verse. Who's that? I'll declare the decree. Who is it, folks? What he describes. It ain't out of that. Or Lavin or Sharon, if Jesus comes. What's his holy hill? It's the dome of the rock. Right there. That's the temple area. That's where David and Solomon built the temple. Why, no Muslim has any business there. That doesn't give any Muslim. That's the Muslim quarter of Jerusalem, up to the Jews got back. That was the Armenian quarter, that was the Catholic quarter, and the Jews were over here with a waiting wall sitting right in there. Well, that isn't, you know, no Catholic had any business being in Jerusalem. What's a Catholic doing in Jerusalem? You know who smart Jesus Christ? Jerusalem. Put him outside the city, amen? Old Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the stone of the prophets. It cannot be that a prophet perish outside of Jerusalem. What do you call that place the Holy City for? Bible well, called the Solomon Jews. Turn to Revelation chapter 11. Nothing like the Bible to put it to seminary education. Revelation chapter 11. Now here's Moses and Elijah coming back and preaching, and they get the head cut off in the city. Look what that city is. Revelation chapter 11, I want to verse down there about, it must be about verse oh, 8, 9, and 10. I want a verse that says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city, which is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. What verse is that? Eight. Eight. See it? Why would you want to make a pilgrimage to there? Aren't people strange? What do you want to go to Jerusalem for? That's the city murder your savior. You know what God called it? Sodom in Egypt. I have a time on it, don't they? They know that book is called, and that book and the book of Revelation is called the Beloved City. That means in Revelation chapter 11, there must be something more wrong with that city. You know what's wrong with that city in Revelation 11? The Antichrist is there. The son of perdition is sitting on the throne of God. So it's called Sodom and Egypt. And after he gets knocked off and uh, the last battle takes place, they come to the beloved city. Oh, well, now history begins here, and history ends there. And the history then is going to center around those two places right there. Matter of fact, in Revelation 17, he says, Babylon the Great. And Babylon is sitting right there. Oh, I know, let's come down here to this country here. This is the country over here called the land of Canaan. It's not Palestine. The word Palestine is a word that was put on uh, Palestine by the Roman army occupation in 70 AD. And that thing is called Philistia. In Exodus chapter 15. It's called Philistia in the Psalms. That's where the word Palestine comes from. The word Palestine means a Philistia. A Philistia. The Philistines, Goliath, from Ham. A genealogy in Genesis chapter 10 talks about those Philistines, they come from Ham. Egypt comes from Ham. You're told in Psalm, uh, you're told in Psalm 105 and Psalm 106, you're told those. Uh, those covenants are on, we told in Psalm 105 and 106 that Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. The land of Ham. It's Egypt. Oh, that line. You know uh, what race Arabat is? Why don't you? Isn't he a Palestinian with a Palestinian liberation organization for Palestine with a Palestinian state? No man. He doesn't fit you. He wasn't even born in Palestine. Why don't you know that? Because all your food is in and out of the way. You never write in there. You run to the back. You can't get any information of it. <laughs> you're just going to want to have you get. You know what life is? How many of you know you manage? Well, there are two or three. She's a Roman Catholic. How come you don't know that? No, don't stupid Christian. No. <laughs> around 10 o'clock at night watching the newscast and you think you're getting something. You get more than that Bible in five minutes, you will have a television station in the world in three days. Well, what's a Muslim doing 
big as Mary was Catholic. She didn't believe in Allah. And she believed Christ was son of God. I read the Quran through 17 times. It's almost marked up as my Bible. Five times there it says, if you believe in Allah had a son, you're damned, you're cursed, you're going to hell. That's his wife. <laughs> what kind of a man do you have? You know, he's humble was. I mean, how do you sign? That's right about something. He wasn't a Protestant. He was an Egyptian. He was the grand mufti of Jerusalem. You say, when? When Churchill gave Palestine to Muhammad. Well, that bird did go to World War II. He went to Berlin and stayed there in Europe to stop it. And it was a nice apartment there and kept him there during the whole part of World War II. And that bird was handling sabotage against the English armies in North Africa when it went wrong over there. Our facts are nephew. Now, what I'm coming to, and I'm coming to it all too late, what I'm coming to is this. If anybody is in favor of getting that dome of that rock, that temple area, to any Muslim or any condition, he is anti Semitic. And right now, our president and Tony Blair of the Irish Republican Army in Ireland and the Vatican all say the Palestinians can have the eastern half of Jerusalem with the Moscow on top of it. That bird country issue. Slick Willie was pastor. 
1997, on a fornication stunt by the first morning rain, the Congress voted to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They didn't do it. You know what Bush said before he got in? That's one of the first things I'm going to do is move the embassy to your life, Bush. You're a Christian. I think he probably is a Christian. He's a good lying Christian. He didn't move. Why didn't you move? You're scared because you put your shot off. You know why you're scared? You have a war. All you got right now is a military exercise. Blow up a few ragheads and shoot a few camel cops. He's going to fight about what you did. That would make a good thing for a problem in Fort Benning in the last two days you went through. You know something? When that mess went on Kuwait, you know what I was getting on the radio? There were 10 people killed in Washington, D.C. every day during that war. We had 140 people murdered in the Capitol. You didn't lose that many troops in Desert Storm. You've been safe from a tank in Desert Storm when you were in downtown Washington, D.C. You've got to grow up sometime. Somebody's got to give you the horrible truth. Now, you know why you don't move Joseph? You have a war in your hands. Now, I don't know a lot of things. I mean, I'm not very stupid at But I know the war. I mean, the first thing I ever shot at when I was a boy coming up was on a squirrel or a rabbit or a deer. It was a silhouette of a man in a National Guard armory with a rifle. I was raised in a home where one of my daddy's ideas was a big fun, fun time was at night to spread out battle maps across the dining room table and, and execute on them for three or four hours at a time. You know, root supplies, you know, and you know, people's of fire, you know, and azimuth rigging and roots and um, turn of the action and just all that stuff. I, I could tell you in detail about the battles of Gettysburg, and I've done that battle here three times, and Antietam, and uh, Charlottesville, they call that Antietam, and Shiloh, and uh, 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 Kiev, and Odessa, and uh, Kirsch Salem, and the battles of Berlin, and the battles of Stalingrad and Leningrad, and the battles of Swanson and Shadow Theory in World War I, and Bellow Woods, just like I recite something I learned in school. If you want a war, well, I can tell you how to get it. Just go over there and move that embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and sign a military alliance with Israel. And son, you will have to war. And I guess you will be half of Europe and China and with Russia. There's an American war that doesn't just take that on. You know, that's not the bushes. Do you realize when there's only one country, the UN, that has no military allies? Why is that? That's strange. The only one country that has no military ally is Israel. Oh, I know this thing right here. See this thing here? That's the kingdom. You see this thing right here? That's paid for with Jewish shekels by a Judean Jew with a clear title he do it. You say, where? First Chronicles and Second Samuel, I read your Old Testament. He goes up to the pressing war of the Orn of the Jebusite and says, I'll pay for that thing, he says, I'll give it to you. He says, No, I'm not going to pay for this, cost me something, and tell you how much he paid for that piece of land. And the first thing is holy in the Bible is a piece of land. And the art goes, it's holy, and it goes right there, which means it's going to be a slaughter of well over 400,000 people right in that vicinity. Because all the whole place they are knows the holy. And that's my holy hill. You read Psalm 2? My holy hill? You know that hill belongs to? God. The one that made the solar systems. You want to turn on the Muslim right? He will lose your shirt. That was Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. You're going to lose your foot. You're a student, something doesn't belong. Anti Semitic. Jeremiah 25. You say, why can't we avoid it? Because the Bible says there's going to be a bridle in the mouth of the nation, so they'll have to go the way he sent them. There'll be a bridle, they'll be bridled up. Shadow. They'll have to ride his direction. Or Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25, or uh, verse uh, 15. Take the wine cup of the Spirit in my hand and cause all the United Nations to whom I have sent thee to drink. It says all nations. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because the sword that I 
the Son of Mother. Then I took the cup of the Lord's hand and made all the nations, all the nations, all the nations to drink. Uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one another, and all the kings of the world, which are the face of this earth, are in the one sack. Verse 27, Drink ye and be drunken, spew, fall, and rise no more, because the sword was trying to send them unto you. And to me, if they refuse to take the cup of thine hand to drink, don't take it. Why, this is my cup. I'm not going to take it. God's going to bless us. Then shall I say to them, Thus say the Lord, You shall certainly drink. Certainly drink. Verse 32, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth to the other. And I don't mean Armageddon. That's a minor battle. Only 200 million get killed not one. This thing is international. He says, wipe out all the nations of that Jew again. That's not an alien nation that do the seal. All right, so there, there it is. And uh, that's uh, this. Your Old Testament is just filled with that. What Christians have done, they've forgotten 500 verses in the Old Testament that they've gotten when they come to pass. If the Lord dies, he makes them come out to pass where he watch them. I hope the Lord doesn't tell it. Oh, I know the history. No history. Here's Palestine, and Palestine has never been a, a Palestinian state in the history of the world. The people in there, when Joshua came in, are Jebusites, Amorites, Hivites, Perizzites, and there's no king there, no capital there, no state there. There are 33 kings in that country when Joshua comes in and they're named. 33 kings. The name is Joshua. It is never going to stay. There are no such things as a Palestinian state ever existed at any time or any condition. And you take when Rome was in there, Rome ran that place and ran the Jews out and the church came in. The church took it over, it didn't make any state, it didn't make any capital. The church had it until uh, General Alloway came to Jerusalem in 1917, remember, under the British mandate, and the British didn't make a mistake, and they didn't make any capital for it. That thing has never been a state of the capital except for David and Solomon. Paid for money by a Judean Jew. Christ said, salvation of the Jews. So every out outlet you have is perfect. All of them. Every one. The notion of things are Palestinian. You know, I was a Jew who came in this place in 1948. You know what happened? How could you know? When they came in there, there were Muslims, five Muslim armies attacked that Jew. Up in Syria, Transjordan, Saudi Arabia, and they came back and around Egypt to attack that Jew. And when they came in there, they told every Arab in Palestine, get out, and if we catch you in there, we come in, we're going to hang you. As, as, as a conspirator of the Jew. 600,000 Palestinians left when the Jews came in. 300,000 stayed. The Jews won the thing, the 300,000 stayed, none of them were hung, and they became citizens, and we were given an opportunity to vote. Which you couldn't do in any country of Muslims ever ran, you couldn't vote for who's going to run you. They could under the Jews. 600,000 left, you know how many came back? Three million. There are three million refugees in Palestine. They weren't born there, weren't raised there, and they constitute. Terrorist organizations dedicated to genocide. If you get that thing right there, what you're doing is arming Islam to kill you. I got 13 statements by Islam leaders from 13 different countries where the one says our goal is getting a capital is to get rid of every Jew in the land. They were called out Jews and Ryan, free of Jews. That's the position. This guy here is a Nazi who lives in Germany. And Arafat is his nephew. So he wants his Palestinian state set up there, so he can kill every Jew in the land. You don't have peace talk for those kind of people. They try to hit them. If you just give me, you know, the uh, right and all, quit it. But he didn't. Well, now, if you just give me uh, Austria, I'll quit. But he didn't. Now, if you just give me the Sudetenland and check with the rock, I'll quit. But he didn't. Well, you can just give me the, the Danish corridor, the corridor, the Danzig corridor, the Poland, out the But he didn't. Brethren, the only thing that men learn from history is that men never learn from history. You'll see the thing right now, right now, Bush and Blair are sitting down to find how much more to give behind them, you know, the Lord War. That's what you did with Hitler for 10 years, and that's the biggest war you ever saw. All the Jews, all the Jews have right now is this piece of land right here. And introduce my back 
out and out like that, and then around the Gaza Strip, and down here like this, and that's all they've got. They got less than half the land not gave. This is called the West Bank. That West Bank is three million miles, and not one of them is the field. You got Galatians, that thing in Galatians, cast out the bomb woman or son, she has no business there. Get her out. Who's going to do it? Nobody. Now, see that thing right there? That's all that view has, and this whole thing was here through here. And Churchill sat down in 1921 with the Arabs and the Catholics in Egypt at Cairo. He took out a pen and he wrote down there all this land over here, this side of Jordan belongs to Muhammad. And the Lord said, You days we never saw the sun set to put a shin on. Well, honey, you're going to wash her sink. I'm out of the end of the shin box. The news media makes these dogs, like FDR and JFK and Churchill, smoking his cigar. He wasn't a Mr. he was a Druid. I've got two of my young men that know their name now for 10, 15 years to check on this stuff out. He's a Druid. Oh boy, one stroke of his pen, he lost China and Malay and Singapore and India and Rhodesia. It's that quick. The Bible says, I'm blessed with the blessed, the first over the first. People, even in the days of fifth wave world power, don't you know that? There was a time the sun never set in the British Empire, it's set now. Russia, Russia's ahead of England, Germany's ahead of England, Japan's ahead of England, we're ahead of England, Australia's ahead of England, the fifth wave world power. The book, the, the world that gave you the English Bible. What happened? They turned to get fat too. In 1921, the Jews started going back, and he published the white paper in 1929. Well, the Jews got back there, they couldn't get off the land on the beach. The barbed wire concentration camps on the beach in 1929, before Hitler ever got to Hitler. So, Hitler was young people. You ever see the movie Exodus? That's the British stop the Jews from getting back to the whole line. And the Lord said, uh, to hear Gary, hey, I think I'll drop you. And Gary said, boss is that. <laughs> and the Lord said, I'm going to have to go and bomb Covenant off the map, okay? But figure this to figure, an order, an order. And away she went. Now we've got to wind this thing up. These are people that left the Jews in the days after that, after 1948, when we got back. That's a military commander, Moshe Diane, the son of the black patch over his eye. He gets his instructions on Blitz Street and German SS officers. And after World War II, some of the SS really depended, they did. And to show the defense, they went down Israel and built Israel an army. And showed them how to handle it. And showed them how to go to the radar. Showed them how to put a bomb out there in a runway where it blew up later when you're trying to clear the runway of bombs. They helped them out. And over the World War. These are the attempts, so much, to bring peace to Palestine by giving more and more of Israel to the Mohammedans every time they met. Now, mm -hmm. Islam lied in all three of those meetings and didn't tell the truth one single time. Just took more land, took more land, took more land. All right, the button down here, I think. Uh, here's a. Oh, by the way, you know what this land is here on the east bank that Churchill gave away? That's uh, Reuben and Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh. That's mentioned in Numbers and Joshua. But who reads Numbers and Joshua? So you have read Numbers and Joshua, I about bet you for 25 years. That's the land grant that Churchill gave the Muslims. It's Jewish land for the tribes. And it's for the Ark of the Covenant. Got it through there and right across by. Like that. All right, now here's some places you know about. Golden Heights. That's a place up in here where we went the high ground and shoot artillery and rocks down the Jewish people. And that, that was given away, given to Muhammad. Oh, I want to go to meet you there. That's called the Golden Heights. This is called the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip is this thing right along here, which is right in the middle of the land of Palestine. But that's how that's uh, a terrorist for us. 
And when his boys go out and run and make a hit, they come back and hide in there. And one time I had a terrible time, and about 18 of them had to hide, so they went to the best place to go. And that's the place where our back's wife went to church. The church of the Nativity. That's why the terrorists went in there. Because they are about the Pope, and like that. But the Pope says, the Pope said it's not only illegal to give Jerusalem to the Jews, but they all. Now listen, people. I know you want to get along, folks, and keep your image up and keep your income coming. I know you're <laughs> angry. I know you. You want to keep them going just right for, you know, for, for some reasons. But let me tell you something. When a pop bellied lying, Bible-objecting reprobate gets up there and tells you that God is a moral reprobate and it is illegal in the moral, you kick him off the boat. Yeah. I don't care if your mother's a guy. You ought to have better sense. Amen! Amen. Folks, the man going to see that. I hate them himself. Amen. I don't know. Just because a man is a pope, he begins the right to say that. After that book tells you a hundred times that land belongs to the Jew, and the Lord calls it my land, and says, I give it to my people. Not one Catholic or one Arabian has any business in Palestine for anything in that book. Now, what you got to do, Christian, is get rid of that book to get along. You want to get along? Burn your Bible. But you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to go with that book and get along with the world anymore. You've got a political issue to do. And there it is, boy, just hot as a poker. See, Eastern Gate? Cement and shut back in the Crusades. No one's ever been through it since. Kaiser Wilhelm is going to come through there on a white horse when he won World War I, but he lost it. You know why you can't get that gate now? Because it's cement and shut. You know what Ezekiel said about that gate? He said nobody can pass through it because the French went through it. So the guys who cemented the shut didn't know they were the Holy Scripture. Said Eastern Gate, sitting over there. When the Lord comes back, he comes back to my eyes, and he goes right slap through that Eastern Gate. You say, what? Because cement ain't going to bother him a bit. <laughs> didn't you hear about the door being shut and him coming through the doors? But here's a terrible part of it. You know what is right there? A muddled graveyard. So the Lord comes on his white horse, Arabian Saturn, thoroughly. He trumps on Muhammad's people, think, 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 rather than his bodies. That's what the Lord thinks of the Holy Koran. Well, he may have done enough. I got a call from the book of Isaiah 63. I don't know if it's too much to cover. It's too much. But Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. That's the Lord finishing off the people he said he'd finish off. Isaiah 63. Who is this that cometh from Eden with thy garments and bones are Eden and stubborn and his strength? I was speaking righteous with might to say, How come your garments are all red like that? Like somebody tread the wine back on the grapes. He said, But I've been stomping on people. You'll read it there, Isaiah 63, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And he says, I'm going to trample them my fury, and I blow them upon my darkness. I got some dumb Yankee up here that wrote a song and said, he was tramping out the visions for the grace of wrath to someone, and she thought it was something. <laughs> Stupid old man. <laughs> you know who you're going to stomp out? Every nation. Every nation is messed with that view. So that's your business. My thing's over. He's going to be king of kings and lord of lords. And Zachariah said he's going to sit down on the throne of David on the top of the Moscow Omar. And old Mohammed better bow down. And old Rasulullah, Shia, Mohammed. He better bow down. Get the dirt, baby. So the king of kings is gone. Okay, that's enough for a while. You don't want to hear it. I can get the mic, sir. Yes. I have no mic. I have no mic. All right, we're going to take a break, but uh, before we do that, uh, choir rehearsal, correct? Choir rehearsal in the back room there, and uh, we need a couple of guys to take this, uh, this and maybe we'll award it to somebody brought up some visitors, but we'll take care of that during church time. 
Uh, so we need a couple guys with that over here. Um, we'll run a little bit behind, so we'll start at 10 after, or maybe even quarter after. And uh, Brother Trailer, before we dismiss, would you come up here and sing, I Walk Today with Jesus?